Okay, in this video we're going to do a quick example about how the law of conservation of energy can be used to determine the maximum height an object goes to. And this is as opposed to using the five equations of motion and acceleration due to gravity. But if you delve into it at all, you'll see that essentially the equations are all the same. So it's just a different, different look for the same problem. A ball is thrown upward with an initial speed of 30 meters per second. Determine the maximum height of the ball. So, what we're assuming here, here's your ball, and you're going to throw him straight up. He's going to go all the way up to the top. The top, he's going to stop and turn around and come back down. So, what we're assuming at the bottom is that we have all kinetic energy. And we're going to assume at the top we have all gravitational potential energy. So, the kinetic is going to slowly decrease and the gravitational increase until you reach this maximum height, h. And then it'll fall back down and get converted back into kinetic that looks like negative h. I just mean that height is h. Um, I'm going to call this h0 at the beginning of the problem and that way this is all kinetic at the beginning. v1 equals 30 meters per second. And I'm going to recognize that so if this ball is going to stop and come back down that v2 at the top of this is 0. And that means that means it's all gravitational at the top. The law of conservation of energy says we're ignoring things like wind resistance or other things that might take energy out of the system, and we're assuming that the energy in the initial situation is equal to the energy in the final situation. E1 in this case we said is kinetic, and E2 in this case is gravitational. You can have gravitational and kinetic in some situations, but obviously we've started with a pretty easy one here. EK then uses our kinetic energy formula, 1 half mv squared and EG uses our gravitational potential energy formula, MGH. The mass on either side can cancel out. Mass cannot equal zero, so we can divide by it. If it could be zero, then that might be mathematically tricky, but since it can't be, that's pretty easy. And then I can just put my numbers in. One half, 30 meters per second squared is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared times the height. So 30 squared divided by 2 is 450 meters squared per second squared and that's going to be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared h. I'll divide both sides by 9.8 And I'll get that the maximum height of my ball is uh, 45.9 meters. Now I'm sure you're looking at this problem right now saying, uh, didn't we just learn how to do this basic problem using the five equations of motion? And that's true, but I, um, I think this uh, approach will be useful in different ways later. We're just not, we're just not up to those ways yet. So we're really learning the approach of energy here. It's not so much focused on just solving this individual problem. So there it is.